Hello, my name is Magnus Peterson. This talk is about forecasting of currency exchange rates. It is based on this book and you can click on the image or the link below the video. We will consider the example of US dollars to British pound sterling for the period 1971 to 2015. And it is shown in this plot. In early January 2015, the exchange rate was 0.6569. This means that one US dollar would buy 0.6569 British pound sterling and conversely one British pound sterling would buy one divided by 0.6569 which is approximately equal to 1.52 US dollars. We can plot a so-called cumulative distribution function and it looks like this. So we have the exchange rate on this axis down here. And what we have here is a historical probability that the exchange rate was less than a number down here. So for example, if we use the same number 0.6569 or about 0.66, then we look it up on the axis down here and it is about here. We move up here to where it intersects with the black line. And then we go over to this axis and we see the number 0.8 or maybe it's 0.82. So this means that the probability was about 0.82 or 82% that the exchange rate was less than 0.66 in the period 1971 to 2015. Now consider the one year returns. So let's say we exchange from British pound to US dollar and after one year we exchange back to British pound. So the one year return is calculated as the exchange rate for the second year divided by the exchange rate for the first year minus one. And if we do that for all the exchange rates in the period 1971 to 2015, and then we make this histogram, we can see that most of the one year returns were between minus 15 and plus 15%. But some of them were even lower than minus 20% and some of them were even higher than plus 40%. Now let's look at the 10 year annualized return. So in the first year we exchange from British pound to US dollar and after 10 years we exchange back. We need to set an exchange rate for the beginning year and let's use 0.6569 as we have used before. And the exchange rate 10 years afterwards is selected from the historical distribution. And then we use this formula to calculate the annualized return. So we have the exchange rate after 10 years divided by the exchange rate at the beginning year and then we take it to the power of 1 divided by 10 minus 1 and then we get the annualized return and we can plot the cumulative distribution function like this it shows us that the probability of having a loss that is the annualized return is less than zero we look it up here and we say that it is 0.82 which is the same as before where we saw that the probability was 0.82 that the historical exchange rate was less than the beginning exchange rate of 0.6569. We can also look up some other numbers, for example, the probability that the annualized return is less than minus 2%. And we have the number here, we look up, and it is maybe something like 0.28 or 28%. And the probability that the annualized return is smaller than minus 4%, we look it up here. And that is maybe something like 12%. Let's look at an example on how to calculate the annualized return. So we start by exchanging from the British pound to US dollar. Then we invest for 10 years, for example, in a stock market index, such as the S&P 500. And we assume that the gain on that investment is 125%. And this is in US dollar currency. And after 10 years, we sell the investment and exchange the money back to British pound, where we assume a currency loss of minus 25%. So the annualized return is calculated using this formula. We plug in the numbers and we get a result, which is approximately 5.4%. The annualized return on the investment was about 8.4% and the annualized return on the currency was about minus 2.8%. We can also estimate the annualized return by using addition instead of multiplication. And the example from the previous slide is that we had an annualized return on the investment of 8.4%.
and the currency's annualized return was a loss of 2.8% per year. So the combined annualized return was about 5.4%. But if we instead add the annualized return on the investment and the annualized return on the currency, then we get about 5.6%. So there's a small difference, but when the returns are moderate, the difference is minor. And since we don't know the true distribution for the future currency, this is probably good enough. We had a cumulative distribution function on a previous slide, which estimated the annualized return on the currency to be between minus 5% and plus 3% over a 10 year period and a starting exchange rate of 0.6569. So if the investment's annualized return is estimated at, for example, 8%, then adjusting for the currency return gives a range of 3 to 11%. If instead the investment's annualized return is estimated at, for example, minus 3%, then adjusting for the currency return gives a range of minus 8% to 0%. So we just take the estimate for the investment return and we add the range of the currency return, and then we get this range down here. The conclusion is that if two countries develop similarly to their past, then we can use the historical currency exchange rate to forecast the future rate. This can be used to estimate a range for the currency adjusted returns on investments made in foreign currencies. For example, in this case, let's say we were a British citizen and we wanted to invest in US stocks. The book gives more details and also considers other currencies.